serious pointers. Yes, my name's Kim. I work at HubSpot. I'm a front-end engineer. And I'm going to talk about Redux, um, which is the latest thing we all need to have like two and a half years of experience in, in order to be considered good front-end engineers. Because I only have five-ish minutes, I don't know if we're still timing them, I'm not going to go like full code example. Instead, I'm going to give you a, um, some information or some thoughts on what problems Redux solves and why it's good at solving them. And then as we go, I will introduce some code to, uh, to help us out. So from the traditional MVC model we um, at HubSpot used to use Backbone, views can get information from and update models. This is sort of pretty naive. In reality, it tends to look a little bit more like this where multiple views can get information from and update multiple models. This is kind of how, how life works, unfortunately. And it results in something that I kind of think of as MVC pinball, where a change in one model can result in crazy cascading changes across your entire app. So for example, if we were to make a change in model number one, it would result in changes heading to model number two, or view two, three, which go to, well, no, I'm not even gonna try and follow this. It's kind of mad, and in, in, in real life, we're not just making you know, one change. We could make several changes in very quick succession, which is not only going to result in state bouncing around your app, but also small fires in very hard places to reach. A little bit of history. If you've heard at all about Redux, you might have heard of Flux, which is sort of what inspired it. Um, Flux was developed by Facebook at the same time as they were building React. So it follows the, very, it follows the same idea of a um, one-way one data flow. The idea being that if your data only ever flows in one way, it's very easy to reason and predict what's gonna happen as you make state changes. I'm not gonna talk too much about Flux, just know that views can send actions, which are plain objects, which describe a change in state, to something called a dispatcher, which then sends all of those, uh, which sends this, the, the change in state to several stores, which views can subscribe to. That's all you really need to know about Flux. Um, except that Redux takes a very similar idea, but makes it way simpler. Instead, views send actions directly through stores, um, if we had slightly higher resolution, you would see that the store then uses plain functions called reducers to figure out what the new state should look like, take that state, and then send it out to the view. So let's talk a little bit about what each of these elements look like. Firstly, we're gonna talk about actions. As I said earlier, actions are simply plain JavaScript objects um, in the blue box there. They have a type, which a reducer will later use to figure out what should, uh, what should change as a result of this action, and they have a payload. You can really, give this object any shape that you'd like, but this has sort of become um, the accepted standard. Because we tend to send a whole load of actions, um, you can create an action creator, which is just a function which returns an action given parameters. I do use some ES6 stuff here. I'll try and explain it as I go. Um, for those who don't use ES6, that completed equals false. Second parameter is just setting a default um, value of false if we don't pass anything in as completed. That's what an action creator looks like. Reducers tend to simply be um, uh, functions which switch through given actions. They're also given the current state. Again, I'm using, I'm using default here to say our, current, our default state is an empty array. Um, the, we switch through the action type. Once we find the correct action type, we copy the current state. It's really important that we don't mutate the state um, and then calculate what the new state should be and return it to the store. And um, that uh, dot, dot, dot state syntax that we see there is simply saying take everything currently in state and then, or currently in the state array, and then add on uh, action dot payload later. So the store finally is super simple to set up. All you really need to do is take the create store function or method from, the, from Redux and pass it your reducer. Um, Redux then figures out what your base state should look like. In our example, calling get state on my store will give us an empty array. So let's actually start throwing some actions into our store. If we dispatch a write talk to do um, action to our store, remember the add to do function will just result in a object which looks a little bit like this. If we dispatch this to our store, our store is gonna take it, send it to the reducer. This is the exact same reducer code I just showed you. The reducer is going to look through what cases it knows about for um, for type, happily, I happen to implement the add to do as the, as the only one here. It'll take the current state, which is empty, and then append our payload to the end. So after performing that action, um, if we call get, scapes, uh, get state, we should hopefully return an array with one object in it, which is our current, uh, or the to do we just added. We can keep doing this a few more times. We can add two more to dos. Um, calling get state then should give us an array with three 
uh, three objects. I implemented this um, in a very sort of simple manner along with a very na naive uh, React UI, if you'd like to take a look at it there. Um, thank you very much.